Hi, I'm Willie and welcome back to my channel. First of all, I want to thank all the subscribers, everybody who reaches out. You guys are awesome. We're so close to that 8,000. The next jump is 10 and man, the sky's the limit for us, right? So tonight what I want to talk about is in the past we've talked about on switches, we've talked about broadcast traffic and how to mitigate that and some of the effects of broadcast traffic. One of the questions that comes up over and over again to me is, you know, uh, you know, people want me to do videos on RF theory and how to tweak your Unify wireless setup and things like that. And I don't mind doing that, uh, but I also think that you need to understand what we're doing, why we're doing it, and where even I learned to do it. So some of this, a lot of this I learned, you know, I actually take a, you know, I took a Ubiquity certification and I do have that. But a lot of this is a break fix in the lab, a lot of it's reading, talking to other people. And so one way that you can really tweak your your wireless network is to make sure that you are not uh, chewing up airtime unnecessarily with broadcast traffic. So let's take a look at that. Ubiquity out on their website, and I'll put a link to this down in the uh, the comments. They have a really good article that was uh, written back in February. It looks like it was February 28th. It talks about what is broadcast traffic, the effects of broadcast traffic. So um, you know, if you don't know what broadcast traffic is, go ahead and, and read this. You know, and if you know what unicast, multicast is. So unicast is basically one-to-one. -one. Broadcast is we're throwing this traffic everywhere. And it can cause a lot of problems. Well, excessive broadcast traffic on wireless, if you look at this, this is our airtime utilization over here to the left. And this, this example is a 400 packets a second broadcast, multicast data across all APs. And look at this. Everything that is being unnecessarily chewed up, you know, this airtime is wasted across these five APs. So, uh, you know, read this. But if you do this properly, then this is what it can look like. So your wireless network can become more efficient, faster. You knock some of those problems out. So how do we do it? There's a couple different ways. They've got this really nice uh, graphic. I'm, again, pointing at the screen like you can see what I'm pointing at. This graphic right here talks about kind of how they would set it up. And I do have this set up in the lab. Now, it looks like the version of the controller they've got here is 5.4.8. Um, but I'm going to show you on the lab controller and then uh, my experimental controller. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to log into our cloud key. So this is 5.4.14. And one of the things that we can do under wireless networks is we can edit this guy. And right here under the advanced options, we have multicast and broadcast filtering and we can block LAN to WAN multicast and broadcast data. So it doesn't stop. Here, let's bring this up. So it doesn't stop your PC from broadcasting, but what it does is it prevents any broadcast on the wire. It dies at the radio, and the radio doesn't propagate that out to the wireless. So if you need to, to flood back into the switch, you know, your machine can send those that information back in, but the wireless is not broadcasting all of these broadcasts, so we don't have this wireless kind of broadcast storm. So you can turn that on here, and this is a very, very good idea. And the other thing that you really, if you uh, go over the, the tooltips, by the way, the tooltips in Unify getting better all the time. Um, so it says disable this option only if proper multicast broadcast controls are already implemented on the LAN infrastructure. So let's take a look at that. I don't have right now, you know, I'm redoing the lab, so none of the switches are in the cloud key. So we're going to log into the other uh, lab controller, and we're going to take a look at that. So here we have a lab switch, lab switch 2, lab switch 3, and lab switch is a, it's a, a Unify Switch 8 PoE 150. And one of these, I believe, is an access point. Okay, so port 6 is... Mesh AC2, which is somewhere that way at the end of the wire. That is not the point. Uh, so we're going to bring up this port and we're going to click edit. And under 
the advanced options of this port, we've got this enable port isolation. So that port isolation in conjunction with the wireless network setting to limit that will rein those broadcasts in over your, uh, your wireless network. So you're not going to have that issue. I recommend if you have everything in place to do this, to do it. Um, I think this question comes up a lot, and this is just one way to tweak your network. The other is proper RF planning, understanding the physical environment around you and how RF interacts with that. You know, these are all, you know, for one access point in one room, it could be easy. It depends. Are there mirrors here and steel here and, I mean, whatever, lead over here. Uh, you know, it gets real... Uh, real kind of complicated real quickly you know RF planning is something that you should take a lot of time and if you're not comfortable with it reach out to an expert you know there are tools that are available for this but this is one way that Unify gives you to manage some of this traffic to really start tweaking this so this is another um, you know another piece of this software where sometimes people are like ah, oh, I've got this you know the world's on fire and stuff isn't working right when you really need to start looking at these things and tweaking them and Ubiquity through the Unify software is really giving you the opportunity to really hone in these wireless networks and give them the best performance you know that that you can so let's take a look at another switch here's a uh, lab switch 2 which is our 60 and our lab HD is on this guy and you can see I've got this enable port isolation on so between uh, let's see if I can pull up the settings here and we'll go over to wireless networks and we'll edit FBI van and you can see that I've got that block LAN to WLAN multicast and broadcast data so if something on my network floods the switch you know we're ARPing, we're RARPing, we're having a grand old time it is not going out over the wireless before it would be, you know it could be going out over the wireless now think about this they show this example as five APs, right? I'm getting ready to do a deployment at a mall. I'm actually using the mesh product uh, for this, and I think we're putting in about 10 APs, something like that, but it's all outdoor, like a big outdoor open area. Um, but can you imagine, you know, if we're broadcasting over those 10 APs, think about, think about stadiums. You know, if it's not properly designed, we talk about high density systems, which the, the HD is, it's meant for that. It thrives. I would put the Unify HD up against any other vendor at this point. And if you uh, talk to Ubiquity and you tweak these settings and you have proper RF planning, I don't understand why the Unify system won't go toe to toe with any of these other vendors at this point. It all depends on how you're configuring it. So I'm going to put a link to this uh, down there. And as you know, make you know, take a look. Take a look at your. Um, at your hardware, your software, make sure you've got all the pieces in place. And if you can enable this, I definitely would. So that's what I want to talk to you about tonight. We're going to get to some of those other configuration videos. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please use those affiliate links down there when you're doing your shopping. If you want to be notified when I release a new video, click that little bell that's floating around down there somewhere. And until next time,